Welcome everyone, thank you for joining me for this week's news and review for the week of the 2nd of July 2022. I'm Dark Hour 717 and I'm going to be going over all the latest happenings from the past week in the Star Citizen universe. Before we get started though, don't forget if you like these weekly updates, hit that like and subscribe button as it helps get the videos out to more people and I greatly appreciate it. This week was a big week for Star Citizen with a lot going on and a lot of other things coming up. Of course, the live universe is still utilizing patch 317.1, but we did get a push on Thursday night of patch 317.2 to the PTU for wave 1. 317.2 is a patch that is going to have to carry us quite a ways until 318 completes its extended testing, as this will be a huge patch bringing in the cargo refactor, salvage, and so much more. So does patch 317.2 have enough in it to get us through the three or more months of testing that it'll take for 318 to arrive? So far in the couple days we have been playing, I think absolutely it will. I will have the link to the latest patch notes in the description so you can see all the info for yourself, but we'll go over some of the highlights now. Testing focus for this news patch as of right now is centered around several things. The hit registration ship combat test, Derelict Reclaimers both on ground as well as in Zero-G, Derelict Colonialism Outposts, new Lagrange Stations throughout Stanton and the Art Corp Microtech and Crusader areas, expansion of the Grim Hex Hospitals, the Combat Service Beacons, Illicit Collecting Delivery Missions, and of course the Planetary AI Network Update. As these are the current testing focuses for 317.2, this is not the only new items coming in. Currently, Siege of Orison is not being tested, and it's actually slated for a testing on Sunday at 1 p.m. Eastern Time. This, of course, is the new massive dynamic event that takes place just off of Orison and is an event of massive scale and runs across several floating platforms and many buildings. You can check out a video on it from an earlier test that we were able to participate in just above. The performance of the patch so far, in my honest opinion, is not perfect, but what patch ever really is. This is an alpha, of course, but overall, no real game-breaking issues that we've encountered yet. Friendsless is appearing to be working properly. Actual gameplay is running fairly smooth, though we are seeing random desync in some of the derelict areas. And in the derelict on the surface of Microtech, we found at night with all of our flashlights going and several ships in the area, we really killed the FPS all the way down to a slideshow and a whopping four frames. Once we turned off the flashlights though, this recovered quickly and went back to normal. Other issues we ran into are the Black Kite Reclaimer Space Derelict automatically shows as a red target when arriving on site, which caused us to get destroyed when the derelict was attacked. Arc L2, one of the newest Lagrange stations, had no mining inventory in the kiosk at the refineries or on display in the shop. We had some other minor issues such as an occasional random falling down, but overall the patch is running extremely well to the point that it seems to actually be smoother and more stable than 317.1. We've also seen an extensive list of bug fixes posted and so many I will not be able to cover them all. But some of that have actually plagued us for some time back to 317.0 and even ones that make certain gameplay loops unplayable for some backers. Some key items for bug fixes though are that the player should no longer be able to directly call another player to constantly monitor their location, which means that this exploit has been closed and is no longer a viable way to track people. Players should now be able to see and add other players on their friends list from the main menu, fix an issue causing attacks against ships to sometimes not register, fix an issue causing the Argo Mole to have no cargo capacity which prevented mining, Crusader showroom should now have sales terminals that will no longer display just a black screen. Area 18 center mass elevator doors should no longer be duplicated and we should be able to access the shop there on the second floor. Refinery shop kiosk should no longer have blank displays. The Redeemer nose turret should fire now correctly. Fix an issue causing players to impact into planets when quantum traveling to a party marker on the surface and they fixed an issue causing the bed logout prompts to be missing from all ship beds. In total, 54 bug fixes were listed on the first Wave 1 patch notes with another 5 on the Foxtrot update Friday night. I think overall, patch 317.2 is going to prove to be a welcome addition and one that does have the potential to provide a lot of content and experiences to get us through to 318. With this, as well as the added past dynamic events, it feels we will have a steady string of content to keep us going. 
alongside that another thing to keep us going is going to be seeing a partial persistence wipe with 317.2 when it hits the live pu as announced by cig after all the efforts were exhausted to correct a number of concerns it was found to be best to do a wipe with this newest patch this will reset all players aue seawalls as well as in-game purchased items clearing all backers inventory of ships armor weapons and more that have not been pledged of course, our last wipe was at the release of patch 315, and we know that with 317, we saw a large number of issues occurring with inventory, AUE seawalls, and many other items. We also saw exploits making it possible again to easily reach the 100 million AUEC or even higher mark for some people, and the residual effects of this, of course, can lead to issues. While CIG does all it can to only wipe the persistence when absolutely necessary, it appears it has reached that point. One thing that will be kept though is everyone's reputation. This will remain. Me personally, I'm happy to see the wipe come as I hope it will really offer for some more stability to the verse. And I think it will also provide some reason to grind out for those items that you want. With Siege of Oris coming and its hefty payouts as well as other dynamic events, I see a huge AUEC earning potential being available to earn back what we'll lose. We did find out as Dilo had mentioned last week though that some older dynamic events are coming back. We have currently the weekend of dynamic events with Jumptown 2.0 running as well as the Ninetales blockade. The schedule has been posted and I'll include a link to it in the description. Both these events are running at different times over the weekend though, and you may ask what good when the AUEC is going to be wiped. Well for one, the experience. Both these dynamic events do offer a variety of gameplay and storytelling. They are a lot of fun to do as an org or individually. As for the AUEC though, CIG did announce for those participating, they will be looking to hand out additional AUEC after the wipe has been done to reward some back to those who partook in these events. Now, all honesty, the last time this occurred, they did come through with additional AUEC when Xenothreat ran just before the 315 wipe. Was it earth shattering? No, and it definitely did not equal a single run through the event, but was considerate and thoughtful for them to provide it. I personally got about 125,000 AUEC and it was definitely helpful. There is no telling as to the amount that CIG will be handing out after the wipe because they have not said yet at this time. My anticipation though is there will be no shortage of AUEC earning potential with the new patch though. Due to the lengthy time that we're going to have 317.2 in the live universe, we will likely see multiple runs of Siege of Orison, and with the recent Bandu and Xeon translations, it seems that this was a sign that Xenothreat is making its way back to live as well. I would not be surprised to also see more with the Ninetales blockade and Jumptown 2.0 as well. So keep an eye out for 317.2 to hit the all backers PTU and eventually live. I think this will be a great improvement over 317.1. A lot of this information was included in the This Month in Star Citizen newsletter on the RSI website. Other things to note with this are Foundation Festival, which is a month-long celebration of Star Citizen and its community. This will include updates to the guide system, org spotlights, as well as eight earnable free exclusive paints. We'll also see a free fly event running from July 7th through the July 18th time period with discounted starter packs and a referral bonus for a free Drake Dragonfly with LTI. Don't forget the finals for the Battle of the Bricks between Team Star Citizen and Team EVE Online as this will be streamed on July 22nd over on Twitch and all goes for a good cause for the Children's Miracle Network Hospitals. Join to see the two teams go head to head in an attempt to build the other team's community entry of LEGO model. Monday we did see the usual This Week in Star Citizen announcing the end of the Alien Week and its celebrations. On Tuesday, we did see the monthly Galactopedia with a list of articles for the lore enthusiasts. And of course, Wednesday, there was no roadmap roundup as it was an off week. But Thursday did bring us the latest and final episode for this quarter of Inside Star Citizen. And this was a sprint report where we see Jared go into the details of the new 317.2 patch. He first talked about some of the new armors as well as the new Grey Cat backpack for salvage. And we got a look at the exploration themed vintage spacesuit, which absolutely looks amazing. And this will be available to subscribers in a few months. Also, they touch base on the expansion at Grim Hex medical area and the much needed and extremely cool new small and medium hangers on the Lagrange station. We were actually using these in the PTU last night, and I will say I really like these additions. Another great point is the combat service beacons that are going to take you through targets as small as an Aurora all the way up to an Idris. 
and who does not want to see the boom a dying Idris make? Jared then gets into the Siege of Orison, and I'm excited for this. I cannot wait to get into this dynamic event and run through this again. They did go on to a top 10 hints for Siege of Orison, and I will say there were some good tips and somewhat inside look at the event. The show was short but packed full of information, and I definitely recommend checking it out. The link is going to be in the description. After that, we did get Star Citizen Live, and this week it was a Q&A with the audio team. Jared was joined by Jack Campbell, Graham Phillipson, and Bob Rizzolo. Episodes go, I really had a little difficulty keeping up with this one. And by no means does that mean it is not good info, it's just I'm not an audiophile. I will admit this is one I will not be going in depth with, but for those who are into the audio tech, I definitely recommend checking this one out. And that's about it for the week. With 317.2 currently in the PTU, if all goes well, I'm keeping my fingers crossed we might see an all backers this coming week. We'll just have to wait and see. So be aware we will be streaming our experiences over on Twitch Sunday night at 7pm with an extra stream earlier in the day at 1pm as we participate in the testing of Siege of Orison. Feel free to pop in and check it out. Don't forget to get your entries though in for July's giveaway which is the Origin 325A. Just subscribe here, comment on any video to be entered and if you follow over on Twitch you can get an additional entry to double your chances. Winner's going to be drawn on August 1st. And if you'd like to help support the channel, check out the merch store, Patreon, or hit the join button above to get a membership for as low as 99 cents per month. I again want to thank all of you for stopping in, and please be safe out there, and we will catch you next time.